All right, guys, Eric here, Accurate Appraisal Partners. We did a video oh, a couple weeks ago about manufactured homes. What are they? Today, we're going to do manufactured homes, real property versus personal property. Um, I was going to do this video last week, but just too crazy of a week. So we'll get it this week. So anyway, manufactured homes, are they real property? Are they personal property? Are they a house? That raises a lot of questions and a lot of misconceptions. So quick recap, recap, manufactured homes built on a metal chassis in a factory, come in on wheels, lift it up, set on a foundation or set on blocks, secured, done deal. Chassis never comes off, usually the axles and tow hitch do. On the back, you're gonna have HUD tags, unless it was built before 1976, then it wasn't built to HUD codes. On the HUD tag, you're gonna have three letters and typically six digits. The six digits don't have to run in numerical order, like one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, seven. But if they don't, they have to match the HUD certification, which is typically under the kitchen sink or in a master bedroom closet, but they hide them anyway. The HUD certification, manufacturer, company, VIN number, date, HUD tag numbers, and typically the model number. Okay, that was our quick recap. So real property versus personal property. What, what are we doing here? <clears throat> How can a home be personal property? When a manufactured home is built, it comes with a title. A manufactured home is really no different than a glorified RV as far as like the state of Colorado or the county is concerned. So it comes pulled in, they build a foundation, they set it on the foundation. A lot of times banks or lending institutions, when you do a, a project with them, they will purge the title basically when it's set or even start the process beforehand. So this will show up. There will be no titles. When the home is placed, the title is purged. And then this home is considered real property. Now, if the title isn't purged, this happens probably more often than not. The home comes in, gets placed on a foundation. So you got your fancy home on a foundation. Well, you still have a title. So the title, it's no different. This is personal property. When this home's set in there, even though it's secured and on a permanent foundation, this is still personal property. So then what the county assessors do, um, let's say you own 40 acres, I hope you can see this, 40 acres of land. And you put your brand new home dead square in the middle because you're like me and you don't like neighbors. So anyway, you got your new home here. It's on a permanent foundation. This is what everybody, well, it's on a permanent foundation. Okay, yes, but there's still a title. So the assessors have a parcel number for the land, XYZ1234. We'll say that, XYZ1234. Now you place this home here. Yes, it's on a permanent foundation. So then the assessor makes the trip out to your property. He comes out and he says, yeah, that's a nice looking home. We're going to record it so we can tax you. But the title isn't purged. So this is a, um, um, a personal property. Sorry, I'm getting tongue tied. So since it's personal property, they're going to get assigned a second parcel number. It's going to be M Y Z one, two, three, four. Typically the parcel numbers of manufactured homes will start with an M for manufactured mobile. Doesn't always, but this works for the example. So now this is being taxed under this parcel number, your land is, and then your manufactured home because it's personal property is being taxed under a different parcel number that's registered as personal property, even though it's on a permanent foundation. So this usually happens, like if you get a loan, the bank will loan on the property, and then the bank will also loan separately on the on the manufactured home. And they'll do like, I think it's a UC1 or something. It's, it'd be like the same way they take collateral or hold lien on a, oh man, an RV, uh, your farm tractor. You know, I got a Kubota and uh, it's just got a UC1, I think is the, the terminology lien. So it's just a personal property lien. Uh, and then they'll hold the title also. Well, <clears throat> five years down the road, you're tired of paying the stupid interest rates. So you go to some reputable mortgage, <clears throat> excuse me, reputable mortgage company and say, well, I need to get a loan. Well, me as an appraiser, I come out and I say, oh, okay. Or, or if I'm smart, I do my due diligence. And I say, wait, 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 
First of all, they're going to call me and they're going to say, we want an appraisal on 40 acres and a house. And I'm going to say, oh, okay. So I'll look at some pictures, be it on Google Maps, Zillow. Hopefully the assessors took a picture. I'll be like, wow, that's either a manufactured or a modular home. And we'll get into a modular home in a whole separate deal. But I'll look at it. So then I'll go back to the bank or the mortgage company and I'll say, hey, guys, this is either manufactured or modular, you know. And, and they'll say, well, no, it's, it's on a permanent foundation. I mean, this is something I hear every time. I, I bet you I've dealt with seasoned mortgage brokers. Oh, it's on a permanent foundation. I don't mean nothing if the title ain't purged. So anyway, I do look at, do my research. And I find out there's parcel number for the house or land, parcel number for the house. I'm like, yep, yeah, definitely a manufactured home. So I call the bank back and they say, okay, well, we got we to gotta purge the title. So then they go through a whole process. When you purge, this, purge the title, I've never purged one before. I have a house, but typically you go to the assessors and then you go through the state and then the state will purge the title. And that means this does now become real property. And once the title's purged, you file the application and then the assessors recognize it. And then this parcel number, my whiteboard isn't very good. This parcel number goes away. Sometimes the land will keep the same parcel number or maybe they, they don't, and then they reassign you a new one. Either way, now you have real property land, real property home. Now this is where it gets confusing. I get calls all the time. Well, I have a house, I look it up. I says, yes, you have a manufactured house. They say, oh no, no, the title was purged, it's a house. No, it's not a, technically if you got four walls, a roof, heat, plumbing, it's a house, it doesn't matter. But Everybody gets this misconception. They say, oh, no, no, I, I put my manufactured home on a permanent foundation, and now it's a house because the title's purged. No, it's not a house. It doesn't convert to a house as in a single-family residence, stick-built, whatever, or it doesn't convert to a modular. Manufacturers don't magically appear into modulars. We could apply that to many things in life anymore. But the point being is that this is still a manufactured home. When you purge the title, this goes from real prop, personal property to real property, but it does not change the type of home it is. So when I come out, and I've, I've had people try to do me dirty on all these things, when I come out and you tell me, oh no, it, it's a house it's, or it's a modular, and I see these HUD tags and this HUD cert, it's still a manufactured home. Now the difference is, because you purge the title, it's under one parcel, and it's now considered real property, you can now go get loans on it easier. Anybody that'll loan on a manufactured home, FHA, I think VA, I don't do VA, but I think VA, I just did a USDA deal, conventional, secondary market, you know, back in the day, a lot of people wouldn't touch manufactured homes. With the economy in 2024, I don't know where we're gonna go again, but as of now, there's a lot of loan packages and financing deals for manufactured homes, but it is real property. It's not. It's not changing. So we're not. We're not converting all this magically into something. Now, here's where something's going to get tricky. Tricky. So you take real property land. You have a personal property manufactured home. You purge the title. So now it's all real property. It's on a permanent foundation. You went and got an engineer to do. Uh, I don't know, to say it's secured, tied down properly. So it is a legit house on a foundation, but it's still manufactured. Now, remember we discussed this June 15th, 1976 in a previous video. That was the first start of this. So if you bought it before that date, or let's say grandma got it and you inherited it, or maybe you got a good deal on something and the county lets you put it in. That's pretty rare anymore, but you put it in, you put it on the parcel, you purge the title, this is kind of an oddball scenario, but I've seen it. When you purge the title, so then you're like, I have a house now. I have, yes, it's a manufactured home, but it's on a permanent foundation and it's real property. Now I can go get a good loan. I can get that 3% interest rate or whatever. So then I pull a set, I come out and look at the house. I always pull assessor's record search. So let's say I do it blindly. I come out and look at the house. I say, oh yeah, yeah, it's a nice house. And yeah, you purge the title and it's, it's real property. We didn't, it didn't convert to nothing, but it, it's real property now. So it is land and house together. And then I go pull assessor's records and I say, uh oh, uh, it's a pre-1976. And I just had this happen. So you can't argue with me on this. I've had it happen several times, but I had it happen like two months ago. 
It's a pre-1976 home. And the person says, well, no, I purged the title. It's real property. It's affixed to a concrete foundation. It's, I restuccoed it. I built a little addition on the side. I can't move it. it. It's real property. This is what hurts when it's a manufactured home. Even though it's real property, not personal, because you purged the title, it's a manufactured home. And now it's a pre-1976 manufactured home. In most banks, especially the secondary market, FHA, they will not lend on any manufactured home pre-1976 because that's before HUD codes were up, implemented for building, uh, building components or building compliance. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. So even though you have real property and the title's purged and it's considered a house or considered, you know, real property, permanent foundation, a bank will not loan on it. Well, I shouldn't say a bank, but a secondary market FHA will not loan on it if it's pre-1976. So you can tell everybody it's real property. You can tell them it magically changed to a house or it's a magical modular now. It doesn't matter. You have real property and you have a nice, I've seen some darn nice manufactured home. So I'm not knocking them. I'm just trying to explain this with reality. You have a nice manufactured home that's considered real property on a permanent foundation. There's a lot of finance on, financing options. There's a lot of deals available, you know, for purchase packages, refinancing, you know, home equity. I've seen it all. But just remember, you're converting it from personal property to real property by purging the title, but you're not changing what you have. I've even done homes where the HUD tags are stuccoed over, the HUD certification's gone. Uh, sometimes I'll even say, I think it's on purpose. Well, you're not gonna hide it because I'm gonna crawl underneath and guess what's gonna be there? Frame rails. If there's frame rails, then we gotta figure out when was it manufactured? Are the banks gonna lend on it? And then you're gonna have to go where the banks are. And there's a form, I should have looked that up before I started this video that you can file to find the HUD numbers and the HUD tag based on address. Sometimes on the frame rail towards the front of the tongue, they'll stamp. Well, I think they all say they do, but I've had a hard time finding them. Stamp the HUD numbers on the frame. But it, don't try to outsmart the system. Just, just go with it. So remember, you own your real property. You place your home, which is personal property. You purge your title. Now you have real property, a nice home on a permanent foundation but you still have a manufactured home when the title's purged. So when you're talking to people, you got to explain what's going on because probably everybody's going to find out. And it's a lot easier when you go to do your loan application or talk to your friendly mortgage broker to explain all this in the first place. That way you can start on the right path. They can look for the right financing deals. You know, we can look for the right comps and then hopefully we can get you a good appraisal. Anyway, I'm long-winded. I know I babble, but I hope this helps a little bit. I'll do another video of manufactured versus modular. You can't sprinkle any fairy dust on these things and make a manufacturer a modular. There's a whole different science to that. So anyway, Eric, Accurate Appraisal Partners, you can check out my website. It's down in the comments or links or whatever. I'm not very good at this, but thanks and have a good day.